In this lecture, we're going to look at my open math problems 17 and 18, but before we do, I want to show you in a couple examples. Here we have two vectors, 4, 3, and 5, negative 12, and we want to find the angle between these two vectors. So you can do this a very slow way. In that, well, it's not exceedingly slow, but you've done it before. If you want to find the vector, the angle between two vectors, you can use the law of cosines. But there's another way to do it as well. So I want to show you another way of doing it. And the way that we can figure this out is using the geometric interpretation of the dot product, which is found on the bottom of page 340. So if you look at the bottom of page 340 of your textbook, you'll see the geometric interpretation of the dot product. And this is the formula for it. And so the cosine of theta is u dot v over the product of the two magnitudes. So you have the dot product in the numerator, and you have the product of the magnitudes in the denominator. And the result of this product is that it's equal to the cosine of theta, where theta represents the angle between the two vectors. So if you take the dot product of these two vectors, which would be 5 times 4 plus negative 12 times 3, and then you divide by the magnitudes of each of these, and this is a 5, 12, 13 triangle and a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so that would be 13 times 5, which is 65. This is kind of a lo long and slow way of getting this <laughs> same answer. But here we got, like I said, 20 plus negative 36 The product of these, okay, so this was a bit of a typo. They mean to say 13 times 5, but the way that they wrote 13 times 5, it looks like 13.5. So 13 times 5 is 65. And then we end up with saying that, that theta is then the cosine inverse of this resulting number, negative 16 over 65, and that's how we find the angle between the two vectors. So it's an alternative way as opposed to using the law of cosines. Okay, so let's look at another example. Uh, so let's look at this example here where we need to find the angle between these two vectors, uh, 4, negative 3, and 6, 8. We don't even need to draw a diagram. Instead, we can go straight to using the geometric interpretation of the dot product, which the formula is on the bottom of page 340. We find the dot product of the numerator, and then we have the product of the two magnitudes for the denominator. The result is that the numerator ends up being zero. And if you have a numerator of zero, then the entire fraction is zero, right? So what happens when the cosine of theta is equal to zero? Well, that means that you have a 90 degree angle. Now, what was driving this? The numerator. So if the numerator is equal to zero, then you have a 90 degree angle. In other words, if the dot product is equal to zero, then you have a right angle. Let me write that down. So if the dot product between two vectors, if the dot product of two vectors is equal to zero, then you have a right angle between the two vectors. Another way of saying this is to say that the two vectors are orthogonal. If u dot v is equal to zero, then you have orthogonal vectors set up this geometric interpretation of dot product formula that the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of the two vectors divided by the product of their magnitudes and then we take inverse cosine of 3 divided by root 13 and we end up with the angle between the two vectors is 33.69 degrees. Now in this case down here we need to find k, a missing component, so that the product of these two is zero. That is the dot product of these two is zero. Why is that? Because we were just saying that in order for two vectors to be orthogonal 
the dot product would need to be zero. So if we want two vectors to be orthogonal, we want their dot product to equal zero. So that would look like this. We would want, um, sorry about that, hold on. We would want two times negative five dot four times k, sorry, four comma k, to equal zero. If our numerator of the geometric interpretation is zero, then we have an orthogonal pair of vectors. So that would be two times four plus negative 5 k is equal to 0 and so you, then you can see that uh, k would end up being 8 over 5 or 1.6 depending on how this is typed in. There you go and that's your problem set.